crafters lisa here from fun stuff crafts so glad you could join me for another inspiration friday if you're new to my channel thanks so much for stopping by i'd love it if you would subscribe and click on the little bell below and it'll alert you each time i upload a new video so today is inspiration friday and i love to try to post a project every friday lately i've been doing a mixture of sewing and projects with my Cricut. And so today it's time for a Cricut project. So I discovered that you could cut Shrinky Dink material with your Cricut. Now Shrinky Dink takes me way back to my youth and I can remember when I was a little kid with my mom making Shrinky Dinks, we would trace things and color things. But add in your Cricut and design space and the things that you can do are just incredible. So I found this paper on Amazon and I'll put all the links down below. It's really important that you use the inkjet if you're going to use the print then cut that I'm going to show you how to do today. And then this is an example of one of the items that I made. It's a little keychain. So I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to size your project right what the settings are on your Cricut to cut the plastic, because I will tell you that is probably the biggest trick. Um, it took me a while to get the settings right, and I'm gonna show you what you need to do. So why don't you just give me a second. I am gonna join you in Design Space, and we are gonna design this cute little keychain that I made with my Shrinky Dink material. Okay, so to start this project, we're going to start out in Design Space. And I've already designed this cute little Be Kind um, little charm that I'm going to make. But I want to show you how I go about picking designs to use for Shrinky Dinks. One of the things that I've found, I like to use my Cricut because my Cricut Maker has such a nice cut. So let's go ahead and just recreate this one and I'll kind of show you um, what I, um, how I decided what I was going to do. It just seems lately, be kind is a really nice saying um, um, in the world we've got today. So I just thought this was such a cute one um, to do. So if we go back down and let's find it. And there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and just pop it into Design Space. And then one of the things I found with the Shrinky Dinks is when we do our print then cut, um, I want a smooth cut all the way around. So what I like to do is I like to put a white background. So I'm going to go ahead and add a circle to this one. You can do any shape that you would like. The circle seems to work the best for me. And I am going to go ahead and turn it to white. And then I am going to send it to the back. So I'm going to hit my arrange and I'm going to say send back. Okay. Now one of these fun things to do is you could change your white because we're going to do print then cut. Right. And so it's going to print any color you put in there. So if you wanted the back of yours to be purple or you wanted to be yours to be yellow, you definitely could. One thing that I found that I have a lot of fun doing though is by doing a white background, I actually have been able to do some coloring. And so we're gonna actually color in these flowers and add a little bit of variety, okay? So one of the things I wanna do right now is see how I've got this yellow border around it. I really like adding another border. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the circle, the white circle, I'm gonna duplicate it, okay? And I see right now that it is 6.667. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make it a 6.9. And as long as I leave the lock on, the other side's gonna be a 6.9. I'm gonna send it to the back. I am still on that one. I'm going to turn it to yellow. Okay. And then if I grab all three of those designs, and I'm just coming over here to the right hand panel, holding down my shift key, and I've got all three of them selected. You can see how they're a little gray. I'm going to go up to my align and I'm going to put center. 
Now this is a little bit skinnier of a yellow line, but it's still a nice line, okay? So now I have all three together. They are lined up absolutely perfect. So to make it a print then cut, we need to flatten it. So down here on the bottom right hand corner, I'm gonna click on the flatten button. And now that is all one image, okay? Now one thing with the shrinky dinks is they do say they, they shrink anywhere from you know 30 to 50% of size. So for example here, the one that I've already made earlier today is 3.8 the size and when I got done baking it it came out as, as a one and a half by one and a half and I think that's a really nice size so I'm gonna go ahead and do 3.8 now that I have flattened it it's all gonna go proportionately okay and so there I have got my design now some other fun ones that you can do is I actually have a uploaded um, image of my logo if I can find it and I'll show you how fun it is even with something that's already um, totally colored um, the color is so vibrant when you're looking at um, the, the shrinky dinks when they're all done it's just so fun to see so here's my logo and I made a really cute keychain earlier today with this logo. And so my logo comes in very big. And so you can't even see it yet. I'm going to go ahead and make it into a um, four, four by four. So it will be much smaller. Okay. And then right there, I could um, go ahead and um, put a circle around it. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I am going to go for a shape. And I'm actually going to stick with a square, okay? And so I'm going to do the same as we did before. Um, this is a four. I'm going to go ahead and teal is the one color that I really like quite a bit. And so I'm going to make this one be a teal color. And then I'm going to make that be a 4.2. So it's a little bit bigger than the other one. I didn't want to take there. 4.2, okay? and I'm gonna put it behind. So I'm just gonna put it over the top, I'm gonna go to arrange, and I'm gonna go send back. If I grab both those features, or both those images, and I do an align, and I do a center align, it is gonna be completely centered. I've got both of them selected, you can see they're both gray here, so now I can do a flatten, okay? So now, I have got a little charm that I can do. I'm actually going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to play with the four. I'm going to go ahead and make this one be four. I'm going to go ahead and hide this one I did earlier. And so now we have got our two designs. So you guys, there are just tons of designs you can pick from in Design Space to do this. I wanted to show you the difference of doing one that's already all colored and it's got some really pretty colors in it and then one that I'm actually going to take my markers and we're going to color in this okay so the key to this is you put some type of border around it which is why I picked a circle and I picked a square here and then you use the flatten feature okay so then if we go to make it now it is going to take us to the mat and it is going to show and now remember we've went over this before in videos whenever you do the print then cut this black line is required because that is what my maker is going to look for to know where to cut this image okay so the very first thing I'm gonna do here or the very next thing I guess I should say I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send it to my printer now I've got a, an Epson work workhorse but it is an inkjet it's really important that you use inkjet printer I'm gonna leave my bleed on and what the bleed on means is it's gonna bleed out this outer edge a little bit so when it cuts it it's completely cut in the teal or the yellow if I took did not have the bleed on there's a chance we would have some white in our cut okay 
The other thing I like to do is I like to turn on the system dialog and that's going to bring up my actual printer options, which is really key to be able to do. So what's going to happen here is it's going out and it's looking for my printer. I am going to, I like to feed this type of paper. I have a rear tray in my printer, so I'm going to feed it in the rear tray. I am going to select a matte photo paper. I've just found that this one works the best. And then I've got the quality is already at the best. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go over and load my printer. And then I'm going to join you back here in just one second. So let's go ahead and hit print here. And okay, now I've got this all printed. And now this is the setting that took me a little bit of time to dial in. And I want to show you guys what I actually did. So normally I have all of my favorites set here in Design Space, but I needed to figure out a good setting to cut this plastic. And so I went down here to the bottom and it says Material Settings. And so I clicked on this, and if you guys have never been in here before, it's really interesting and it shows you all of the different types of material, what pressure is being applied, how many times it's going to cut it, and then what blade type you're going to be using. And so I'm going to scroll down here all the way to the bottom, and I had found one that was called Plastic Packaging. And so the Plastic Packaging um, looked like it was going to cut it fine, but it didn't quite do it as much as I wanted it to. So I've actually come in here and I've edited this setting um, and I've put it all the way to a pressure of a 350. I've increased the, the um, rounds of cuts to six times and this has got a fine point blade, but I put my deep cut blade my deep point blade in my machine and so I'm going to go ahead and I just wanted to show you where that was so again I moved it up to a 350 and I changed it to six times okay so I'm going to go ahead and come back up I'm going to close out and so now if I um oops, I hit the wrong close I guess uh there we go okay so now I need to actually click on my setting that I want, which I'm just going to do plastic. And it's going to bring up all the different plastic um, options. I'm also going to turn this into a favorite now. And so when I come in any, any time in the future, it'll be on that front page. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is the one I want. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over and I'm going to load my mat. Now, the one thing here is it is saying my fine point blade. I am going to put my deep point blade in. So we're going to hop over to the mat. We'll get it loaded and I'll show you what it looks like when it came out of the printer. Okay, here we are and I've got my mat loaded and I just want to show you close up. It is just really turned out really nice. It's printed off really nice. I am using my strong grip mat and I have found that this paper sometimes likes to slip. So I have added um, wasabi tape, I always say that wrong, along the edges of my paper just to keep it in place. Okay, so I've got it all loaded. My machine's ready and flashing. I'm going to go ahead and just let the maker do its magic here. Now, fast forward through this and I will show you how beautiful it cuts the plastic. First remember it's got those black lines and that is what my maker is reading for right now. I've read quite a few posts where people have said, how do you get rid of those black lines? I don't want those on there. Well, without those, your maker does not know how to cut. So really important that they're on there. Just going over to check and make sure I've got my right knife in or my blade in. And now it's going to start cutting. Okay, so they're all done cutting. And I just want to show you how 
pretty the colors came out. And the one really fun thing about the Shrinky Dinks is it's um, pale right now, but after you bake them, the colors will really get a lot brighter. But what I like to do now is I like to use my Spectrum Your um, pens and I like to give this just a little bit more color. So I'm just going to very lightly go in here. And this is always fun um, to color. I love to color. You guys can remember uh, um, I did a tutorial on coloring with your Cricut here a couple months ago. Um, sometimes it's just so relaxing. And this way, I get to add my own colors to these flowers. Um, I could have picked out a design from Design Space that already had color in it, like I did with my logo. Um, but it's kind of fun to just add a pop of color. Pick what you'd like. And just like I said, we could have done that background color different, and that would have changed the whole look of this um, picture also. But I just want to give it my own colors. So I'm going to go ahead and just finish coloring here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pop these into the oven. And I'm going to show you what they look like um, and how much they shrink. Like I said, this is just so much fun. And I'm going to give you guys a couple different ideas at the end what you can do with your shrinky dinks. Um, Keychains is definitely a big one. I saw a really cute tutorial somebody was doing and they were making them into bookmarks, which I've done the bookmarks with paper clips before with paper or with scrapbooking, um, you know, elements and stuff. But these just turned out so cute and they had done a bunch of bookmarks um, with animal faces. And so you can draw them if you want or you can just go grab some different designs out of um, design space. Now, the one thing with the Shrinky Dinks, you guys, you don't need to use your Cricut. I just wanted to show you something else that you guys could do with your Cricuts. There's lots of different Shrinky Dink type paper. Um, and so if you didn't want to do the print then cut and you just want to trace and color and draw on the Shrinky Dink, um, it is just lots of fun to be able to do all kinds of, um, you know, different things um, with your Cricut. But if you don't have a Cricut, you definitely can still do this project. It is lots and lots of fun. I've seen lots of tutorials where people um, just trace on, you know, um, and trace right on and then color in. You can do it with pencils. I like the vibrant color of the... Um, of the felt pens, but you can definitely do um, the pencils also. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out to my kitchen, pop it in my oven. Um, I've been doing mine at 300 degrees for three minutes. And I will tell you the first time I did it, I panicked and I took it out early because it was all curling up um, and I thought I had done something wrong, but I've learned you just let it, it curls up, and then when it's done, it flattens back out. So, um, can't wait for you guys to see what this looks like once we get it all baked. So, we're going to go ahead and take these two um, out to the kitchen right now. And I'll join you out there and I'll show you how we set it all up um, on our cookie sheet. Okay, we've got them on our cookie sheet on a piece of parchment paper. And I want to show you that I added a hole punch in each one of them. And then the next step is you want to make sure you put another piece of parchment paper over the top of the images before we put them in the oven. And then we're going to place them in the oven preheated at 300 degrees. And then what I do is I go up and I set my timer to um, three minutes. And we want to make sure you wait the full three minutes and don't take them out early. About halfway through, you'll see your images look like this, but be patient, they will flatten back out. And after three minutes, you'll remove them from the oven and you'll see they may still be a little curled. Don't worry, take a flat bowl or a glass and just press down on the images. They're still pliable at this time. 
And then once you do that, you will see that you have got some nice flat images. Now you can see I've still got a little bit of play in that one. So I'm just pushing it down. And then I have got a really cute images. Now these are examples of the ones I did not color and I did not put a hole punch in. But, but here are the ones that we put the hole punch in and I colored. And you can just see how beautiful those colors came out. So I really hope that you like this Inspiration Friday project. And here I'm showing you some examples of what you can do with your Shrinky Dinks. I've got both wine charms, I've got keychains, and I've got some bookmarks there. There's just so many different things you can do. And then the last thing is you can put a finish on it if you like. And if you click over to my blog post, I go over different types of things you can put on for a finish on your Shrinky Dinks. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and make sure you check out my blog at funstuffcrafts.com for other DIY videos. Thanks for joining me.